I'm serious when I say you do not want to buy this bike. Cue the intro. Hey, I'm Sean from SRKCycles.com, and of course someone wants to buy this bike, but you don't. This is a 2008 Suzuki B-King. Now, somewhere along the lines of some crazy meeting, some guy came in drunk and he was like, I got an idea, let's take the Hayabusa motor, let's make a naked Street Fighter bike and put it powered by the Hayabusa and make it the biggest, widest, most giant Street Fighter bike that ever existed. And then someone made a mistake in like some paperwork and it ended up actually becoming a thing. That's where we got the Suzuki B-King. It came out in one year, 2008, and if you were lucky to see these things on the shelf, you know they didn't sell very well in 2008, and even in 2009 or 2010, you may still have seen them on the shelf, but now that they've been out for a while, they're very sought after bikes, people love these things, and let me tell you all about it. Now, a couple things you'll notice at the first glance is one, it's a massive bike. If you look at it from this angle, you see the thing's like two and a half feet wide. It's probably one of the biggest bikes I've ever ridden when it comes to like wide width. Another thing is, it looks like a wasp. You know, the big old, big old tail. This is a big old stinger. Now normally it's got these, these tri-pipes, these like triangular pipes that are giant. They come out of here, but this was replaced, probably dropped about 50 or 60 pounds by putting these exhausts on. Another cool thing about the bike is look at the headlight. It looks like a robot wearing a helmet which is super cool. And if you're riding this bike, let me just to tell you, you're probably not a robot and you definitely need to be wearing an actual helmet. I would encourage you to go check out some videos of the B-King. Uh, I watched a couple of the B-King time and time and time again. They kept on doing it, just running a Hayabusa on the track. And a lot of that's the rider. Ah, you can just, you can feel even though I'm barely getting on it, you can just feel there's so much incredible raw power that is, <laughs> it's, I'm holding back so much, but even when I'm holding back, it's just pulling very hard. I'm trying to keep the back end not from, I don't want the back end to cut loose. I want to keep this thing nice and solid and planted. Or do I? Extremely powerful, blast to ride. I can't wait to ride this thing in the rain and really let it loose. But, but even then, it's still going to be a little cold. I'll find a, I'll find a, warm, a warm day will come up, some 50 degree day, and we'll, uh, we'll let this thing loose. But ama amazing machine. You also notice the, the strategic place of this seat. It's not just the passenger seat. It's also to stop you from sliding off your seat from all the G-force and, and, and the pool when you, when you get on the accelerator. Accelerator? You don't say accelerator, you say throttle. I don't know why I said that. It's somewhat controversial, somewhat a controversy of what this bike is actually called. Is it called the B-King or is it called what it looks like on here, the BK-ing? We may never know. All right, I'm going to do a little PSA, a little public service announcement real quick. If a new rider comes to me and says, Sean, first bike, first rider, I want to buy that B-King, I will break your kneecaps, say you're welcome, send you home and send you a consulting, a consultation bill, and you will be happy for it from the fact that I talked you out of and crippled you from riding this bike. Because this bike will kill you. I just broke your kneecaps. So even though these bikes are big, this is still based off of the, the Gen 2 Hayabusa platform, which is a very well handling bike. So this thing is gonna handle well, it's gonna be comfortable on long trips, it, it is comfortable, and pulls like a beast. Now, unlike the Hayabusa, this actually, they have the, they have the power band, you know, squished a little bit. So I, there's something I've, I've said to people, I would rather, if you're gonna run a leader bike versus a Hayabusa, and you were a new rider, I'd put you on a Hayabusa. Because up until you up until the higher RPMs, until you really hit that big power band, it's not crazy insane. It's a fast bike, but it's not just crazy insane. This bike is pretty nuts at these low RPMs. It is, it's not quite twitchy like a uh, like a leader bike, but they kind of squish the power so it so it has peak power at close to you know, peak torque at 7200 RPMs. And I think peak horsepower at 9,000 RPMs compared to the Hayabusa, which is a little bit higher, which gives you the ability to actually get into some of the power band on the street. You also notice right here, the steering dampener. This is one of the only naked Street Fighter bikes that come with a steering dampener. I think we can all guess why. They think you, they think you need it. 
Now, since 2008, and in the, re in the more recent years, there have been some other bikes, you know, that have came out as the super, super naked Street Fighter bike. You have the, the BMW S1000 Single R, which is the s naked version of the Double R, and you have the GSX S1000, which is the naked version of the GSX GSXR. Those bikes kind of make sense. They're small, compact sport bikes. To do it with the Hayabusa and almost make the thing feel bigger than the Hayabusa, in many ways it's kind of a novelty, but when you actually ride the bike, you realize how useful of a motorcycle this is. Now when I talk about usefulness, I'm just talking about like going really fast and getting stupid and dying, but not like getting milk. Now the B-King keeps it pretty simple. Seat, kill switch. When I say kill switch, I'm not talking about this. Like about the kill you switch. It's this. This is where your uh, your stupid passenger sits. <laughs> you know, it'd be insane to ride on the back of a bike like this with someone else. It really does keep it simple. It does have an A and B mode. I don't recall ever trying A and B mode out, but from reading up on it, it talks about it's just it just kind of changes the torque curve. It's not necessarily a rain or sport mode. It's all kill mode. You know. Now, there's a couple different reasons of why you would want a motorcycle like this. One. It's a, an extremely unique bike. It's a rare bike that a lot of people don't have. Two, you realize that it's, it, it's incredibly fast. If you go watch videos on this thing on YouTube, or I'm not gonna show you here, but this thing will run nine seconds in the quarter mile. You know, sub 10 seconds, it's an extremely fast bike. It does have some differences with the Hayabusa, where the actual, the wheelbase, the rake, and the trail are all slightly different. So it's not the exact Hayabusa frame, just with fairings taken off. It is different, it is more different than that. It's its own unique bike. But what a lot of guys use this thing for is they use it as a touring bike because it's really, really comfortable. The ergonomics of the bike are nice. Your knees kind of seat right in here. If it starts raining, not that much is touching you on your legs. The handlebars are up a lot higher than it would a, a full-blown sport bike. And all you gotta do is just put some bags or, or wear a backpack. This is really all you need. All right, guys, do the words of wisdom. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Amen. Now listen, I know I, I, know I poke fun and I joke around about don't buy bikes because they're gonna kill you. And I, I want, you know, that there's a lot of truth to that. But once you get to the level where you have a nice, steady throttle hand, and you can balance a motorcycle, get whatever bike you want. Unless you're stupid. And then be the smart, do the smart thing. If you know you're gonna get in trouble, then don't get a bike like this. But uh, motorcycles like this are a blast, tons of fun. And in the rain, I don't get to use it at all. It's just gonna start spinning. But you get to see how fast it pulls in the higher gears compared to other bikes. This thing gets up to the speed limit very fast and those raindrops are like little microscopic needles hitting your face. Normally I'd stop here, do it a zero to 60. I just, I can't, I can't do, I can't do that to the bike. I can't put a horrible zero to 60 number to this bike. Or can I? Let's just do it. There. I hit it back there, way back there. Way back. Was I in second gear? I think I did that in second or third gear. And I hit it super fast, maybe. I don't know. A great touring bike. This is, this is comfortable. I'm leaned over a little bit, but that's just kind of how the sitting is. Um, it's not putting really any extra pressure on my arms. I feel great. It is nice to know that my, my legs are basically 99% protected from the elements, from the rain, uh, because of this giant humongous fairing right in front of me what's surprising is the gas tank's not that it's not even that big uh, i think i remember reading you know you look at it and you're like wow what is that a 30 gallon and it's like a like 4.6 i might i'm wrong i'm probably wrong with that if in the beginning of the video i'm sure harrison probably already threw up the specs for the for the bike all right so red lines at 10 and a half i'm cruising the, the speed limit just over 3,000 rpms the bike is basically idling down the road. They kept the gauge cluster extremely simple. You got digital fuel, digital, what is that? A digital temperature, a speedometer, gear indicator, tachometer. What more do you need? Let's get this thing up to speed. Guys, if you were wondering about the M1 Moto gloves that I'm wearing, 
Uh, these are not, they're not waterproof gloves. Uh, I do, I wear them in the rain all the time. Um, if it's a, in the most cases they're fine, like, like this, they're barely getting wet. But when it's like a torrential downpour, they will get soaked and then you gotta just let them dry, you know, dry off for a day. I've had that question before. I'd call these three season gloves. They're not, they're, they're not, they're not winter gloves. Uh, anything below like 30, 34, 35 degrees. There, it's unbearable, but anything above that, they actually they work pretty well. So if you're doing like really super cold riding, you know, obviously you're gonna need some heated gloves or special thermal gloves. But these will work most of the time for most riders all the time. When I was wearing them in the in the you know 100 degree weather, I didn't even notice they were on. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys later. This B King, as of right now, is for sale. But we'll check out the website srkcycles.com to see if we still have it. We'll see you guys later. Remember, it is not what you're riding, but where you're going.